Hey guys, Sasha Perel Raver here with Screen Junkies News. It's been said by both nihilists and TV detectives alike that time is a flat circle and the action genre isn't much different. With the release of Triple X, Return of Xander Cage, we thought there was no better time to explore both the films that influenced the Triple X series and how action movies themselves have remained fresh after decades of imitation and reinvention. Join us as Screen Junkies News traces the roots of high-octane action films. We begin our journey in 1991. It was a time before director Catherine Bigelow started churning out Oscar contenders like Zero Dark Thirty, and actor Gary Busey was still decades away from shooting direct-to-video releases and fantastic Amazon TV ads. Yay! Bigelow's Point Break follows Keanu Reeves, football star turned FBI agent Johnny Utah, who must infiltrate a gang of surfer bros suspected of being serial bank robbers. Why do they suspect they're surfers? Sex wax, it's good for your stick. From surfing and skydiving to beach fights and bank robberies, not long after Bodie and Johnny parachuted into our hearts, action movies with extreme sports also began to fall from the heavens. Remember Drop Zone? Yeah, most people don't. Shh, don't tell Wesley Snipes. <laughs> and pop quiz hotshot, what movie features an actor riding a car out of a plane midair? If you guessed Furious 7, well, you're kind of right. But guess what? Charlie Sheen did it first in Terminal Velocity. Jumping forward three years, Keanu returned to the multiplex to set hearts pounding and palms sweating with 1994 speed. There's a bomb on a bus, and it's up to Officer Jack Traven and Wildcat Sandy Bullock to stay above 50 miles per hour or they will explode. You try staying above 50 miles an hour on a freeway in LA during morning rush hour. Good luck with that. Now, for those of you who don't consider public transportation a heart pounding thrill ride, Look no further than the film's poster. Seriously, nothing says adrenaline pumping like a city bus flying through a burst of flames as Keanu stares you down. Side note, I used to have the movie theater standee of that poster in my bedroom and I fell asleep looking at those smoldering intense eyes every night, but that is neither here nor there. Not only did Speed cement Reeves as a bankable action star, but fun fact, director Jan de Bont cast Reeves for the film after seeing him in Point Break. Interesting. Unfortunately, the franchise ran out of gas and terrible puns with Speed 2, Cruise Control. There's a bomb on a cruise ship. What do you do? What do you do? Well, if you're Keanu, you pass up the project and give it over to Jason Patrick since he knew it didn't make any sense that a movie called Speed would take place on a cruise ship, which tends to top out at around 30 miles an hour. Whee! While many late 90s films continued the thematic tradition of Die Hard, they also riffed on Speed's use of vehicles, especially planes. 1996's Executive Decision saw a bunch of guys dealing with terrorists that had taken over a plane, and 1997 saw both the President dealing with terrorists that had taken over Air Force One and Nicolas Cage dealing with prisoners that had taken over his ride home in Con Air. But action films burst back onto the freeway in 2001. Pop Quiz Part 2. What happens when you take the movie Point Break and replace the surfboards with cars? The Fast and the Furious. Paul Walker plays Brian O'Connor, a former FBI agent now with the LAPD, who must infiltrate a group of underground street racers who are suspected of robbing semi-trucks full of DVD players. Listen, guys, it was 2001. O'Connor soon forms a close bond with the group's leader, Dominic Toretto, played by Vin Diesel, surprisingly not during a game of tackle football, but rather during a race. Even with the striking similarities to Point Break, The Fast and Furious stood on its own as an entertaining and action-packed movie, and it teaches great lessons about family and how to live your life a quarter mile at a time. By 2005, an action thriller featuring fast cars, extreme stunts, and badass explosions was a proven formula. So naturally, it's time to make a bad sequel. Diesel, like Keanu, decided to opt out of doing both Triple X State of the Union and Too Fast, Too Furious. And his absence was certainly felt as both films didn't perform as well as their predecessors at the box office. Meanwhile, films like Extreme Ops, Biker Boys, Torque, Armored and Redline were released in an attempt to capitalize on the genre, but with little success. I'm assuming it was partially due to Devin Sawa's weird ass haircut in Extreme Ops, but who knows. Lucky for us, Vin Diesel's cameo at the end of Tokyo Drift wasn't just a tease, and we got buckled in for a new era of Fast and Furious movies. 
What's great about the later installments of the Fast and Furious franchise is how they combine the best elements of the Triple X series with Fast and Furious. There's these ridiculous set pieces like dropping cars from a plane, subterminal velocity, driving through skyscrapers, street fighting with giant wrenches, and of the rock. But even with all of that, the film still has a lot of heart. Speaking of well-rounded, that brings us to <sighs> Point Break 2015. <clears throat> 2015's Point Break remake. How about that? We've come full circle. If the end of the circle was a hot, steaming pot of feces. The irony of this remake is that it appears to be emulating the formula and style of the Fast and Furious movies by way of YouTube and GoPro. Extreme stunts, heists, explosions, but everything is just completely wrong. And you resurrected Roach? Guys, Roach is dead. He's dead. He died in a parachute somewhere over Baja. And now you expect us to believe he's working for the FBI? I think not, sir. I see you in hell, Johnny. So the new question is, where do action films go from here? One logical conclusion is that Keanu Reeves may be the key to understanding the future of all action movies. As the star of two influential action movies in the 90s, three if you include The Matrix and its huge influence, could his work in John Wick be at the forefront of the next shift in the genre? No matter what, it's clear that in order to avoid a tear in the space-time continuum, Keanu Reeves and Vin Diesel must star in Xander Cage versus Johnny Utah, The Breaking Point, the single greatest extreme badass thrill ride movie of all time. Click right here for more awesome Screen Junkies news. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can tweet us at SJ News or hit us up in the comments below. Let us know what movies you think have influenced the XXX franchise and why.